welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and I am back with a reading update. My monthly reading update slash TBR. I can't believe it's April already. Where has the time gone? If you've watched my videos and you've seen my previous two wrap ups, this is the way that I do it. I first talk about the books that I've read and then later I talk about the books I want to read. I just prefer to put this all in one video. So I have managed to read nine books. I don't know what happened. Um, because I, this time last year, I, I was really struggling with reading, so I'm, I'm just shocked, but I've managed to do that. I think the reason why is because I read a lot on the train, and I get the train quite frequently, so any opportunity I have that I have to sit somewhere and wait, I read. I'm just going to start off in order, uh, the books I've read and what I thought of. The first book I read was The Bookish Life of Nina Hill. And this was like such an anticipated read for me. I was so excited. It was, I thought it was going to be great. And I was slightly disappointed. Uh, in a summary, this book is about Nina who spends her life working in a bookshop. That's all she knows. She doesn't have much family. She lives in London. She's quite isolated and she just, she loves her job. She loves reading. And suddenly she finds out that she has this like other family and they want to meet her so this kind of like tells the story of how that happens she is social at times i feel like because she like goes to trivia and events like that and she meets someone there so this book is i don't know i just it to me it does it did sound very promising and it was i did like the idea of this book there were moments i found really enjoyable um i just i think what put me off was the whole family part like it just felt like there was so much it was quite unnecessary for me because I unless I really like the character I don't really want to know the whole life history kind of I just wanted to get on with the story I gave this book three stars it just I was slightly disappointed but it was I did like the idea of this book the next book I read or listened to this was an audiobook was The Foundling now I really enjoyed uh, Mrs England by this author so I wanted to listen or read to another one and it was The Foundling. Now this was really interesting because it was actually about a real hospital so in London there used to be this hospital where mothers would give their children and then pick them up a couple years later like the children would be cared for and all of that um, and that's what the story is about about a woman who gives birth to a child and then she has to give her child there uh, and she spends like six years earning just enough money to pick her up because you have to pay but then she finds out that the girl isn't there her daughter isn't there she was picked up like the day after she was brought in by someone and she doesn't know who and then this this story is told in four parts and two perspectives so we have that's the first part that's her perspective the second one is uh it's all connected it's the person who's looking after the child and it turns out that it's the wife of the man that the main character had the child with but he died she's a widow and she's looking after this child and the way she looks after this child is she's completely isolated her from everything i i enjoyed the second part because you really got to like see what life is like there and then the third part is we find out that the main character is actually a maid and she is going to be working or she ends up working for that lady so she's spending time with her daughter but that woman doesn't know. It sounds so complicated, but it's basically a story of how this main character gets her daughter back. I thought it was really interesting. Like it took me a while to really get into this book. I, I'm not gonna lie, at 10%, I thought, no, I'm not gonna continue listening to this. It was interesting. It was, it was, I've never read anything like this before. And like, I'm surprised I've never heard of the founding before. Like, this is why I like to read like historical novels or I'm trying to read more of them because like, I never, like it was so interesting to read about this and it made me want to research what the foundling actually is. The ending I was happy with. I just, I don't know, I felt like I was expecting it to go a bit differently. It, it was definitely something interesting. I've never read anything like this before and I gave it a four star rating. I would definitely recommend it if you want to read something new and you're interested in historical fiction, especially if you like Mrs. England, I think. It's by the same author. It has the same similar kind of English olden vibes. So this really was interesting and I'm I'm glad that I stuck with it. Okay, the next one, uh, I actually filmed a vlog for these next two books and so I, I, I won't talk too much about it, but I'll just give you a quick summary. The vlog should be up sometime. Uh, so I read Daisy Darker. Now, if again, if you've watched my videos, you may have 
You may recall me talking about this uh, book in one of those videos. I might have even talked about it in my booktube newbie tag. I, I talked about it somewhere. Um, but this book, craziness, I, I don't know how to summarise it. I have trouble summarising books that a lot happens. So a lot happens in this book. The darker family haven't seen each other in years and they don't typically meet up for family gatherings. It's not their thing. But it's Nana's 80th birthday and she wants everyone there. She lives on an island literally surrounded by the sea in Cornwall. To, to get there it's really difficult you have to wait for the tide to go out when the tide is in you can't go you can't leave the house basically. Um, so everyone arrives and the main character Daisy Darker uh, it's told through her point of view everything's normal they meet and suddenly she says that no one's getting the house. Everyone meets because they want to know what they get from her will. I don't remember who gets the house now I think it's the little girl uh, one of the little girls and no one's happy with that. So yeah, not the nicest atmosphere going on. And then everyone goes to sleep and at midnight they're woken up by a scream, they find Nana dead. Um, and then it gets interesting because suddenly like people end up dying. Throughout the whole story like it's told through a couple of hours because uh, they can't get help because they are stuck because it's high tide, there's a storm. We'd things are happening, they think someone else is in the house, they end up locking themselves in like one room but then like someone still gets hurt and it's just it's so weird and fascinating like who's doing this? You you have no idea. I had my suspicions, I did have one suspicion of, on who it could be. The last like 20% wow and <laughs> when I was reading the renovation I was just like reading and thinking back to what I read at the start and like how okay it, okay trying to understand while i'm reading it was it was so weird but i was shook i i was completely shocked i did not expect that i i think the ending was shocking to me i've never read anything like this before like never it's please read this book because it's crazy and this book also reminds me of the guest list so if you enjoyed that book i think you might enjoy this one and I gave this book five stars, it's obvious. Uh, it's going to be on like the top of my list for mystery novels. And then the second book I read was another mystery book and it was Then She Was Gone. I have seen this book everywhere. I've seen such good reviews and I thought, okay, I, I'm giving it a go. And I was all disappointed. So this book is about a woman who her daughter went missing like 10 years ago. She was 15 or 16. And this it, this woman is trying to move on. Her family's trying to move on. She can't move on until they then they find her body. She kind of moves on then. She meets someone. She starts dating him. Uh, she feels herself like moving on and, and all of that and healing and, and stuff like that. He has a daughter called Poppy who like reminds the main character of her missing daughter. At the end, we do find out what happened. And it's basically the story of like, what happened? Where's the missing girl? What happened to the girl when she was missing? This book, I, this is a book I wish I could read for the first time again, because now that I know what happened, I just remember sitting here and reading and it was, this book made me emotional at the end because certain things happened that I just thought like, no, like I've, I, I feel like this person did, didn't do anything wrong. And, and then they ended up doing something and, it just that part made me really upset this book is seriously worth the hype it is it made me sad and you really find out what happened to this girl and that was shocking and then there's this there's this moment at the end moment at the end that makes me want to cry because just it really got to me uh there's like a letter at the end i, d I don't want to spoil anything but there's like a letter at the end and that also made me upset it's a mystery novel but it made me cry and I would definitely recommend it to everyone. I I see why it's worth the hype. It is definitely worth the hype. I'm going to be reading more uh, by this author I think and of course I gave it five stars. Okay the next one that I read was One True Loves. It was again a book that I really wanted to read and I've heard or seen quite a good few good things about it. It's also becoming a tv show I think so interesting and this book is about a woman who it's confusing I got a bit confused because uh she got married to her high school sweetheart and then they've been together for 10 years the day before their one year wedding anniversary 
he goes missing. The helicopter he was on crashes and we don't know what happened to him. They all think he's dead. So she moves on and she's dating someone else. She's a fiance to Sam, which is someone from her childhood, again from high school, who was her friend. And they kind of met again after this, um, after this event. Then she finds out that her husband is actually okay and he's coming back. They found him, he's alive, like three years later, I think. I think it's three years. Yeah, and she's torn between what to do because she started a new life now and there's still that part of her that loves her husband. He's her husband. And it's kind of like, I, I feel like most of the story is her trying to figure out what to do. And I, I just, I thought this book was very emotional because like me reading this thinking like, that is a really difficult situation to be in. Like, it, like it's a really difficult situation to be in. And so reading it was like, I really sympathize with this character. And then I feel like a bit of the end, towards the end, is about her and her husband. They go to a cabin in the mountains um, and that just sounds wonderful as well. I really did enjoy reading that. And they kind of work out what they're going to do. And I was very happy with the ending. I thought this book was just, it was again, something different. Like it, if you want a love story, I feel like you will get that from here, but it's also, it's quite a lot of conversation, quite a lot of like thoughts. There's a bit about her grief process, which I, I also thought was w written very beautifully. I just love Taylor Jenkins read. I, I'm not gonna read Daisy Jones and the Six, but I really have enjoyed Malibu Rising and this book. And I just, there's something about her writing that's so like, it was just so easy to read and so easy to like imagine the world and get sucked into this book. It just, it was, I was very pleasantly surprised and I gave this book five stars and I definitely recommend it. I think it's something, it's a beautiful book. Then I uh, started reading a YA book and it was that when we collided. I was missing my YA novels and I really wanted like a typical high school romance coming of age novel but also with a twist because this one focuses on mental health. Uh, I used to read a lot of these books and I kind of miss that feeling of reading these books. So we have a, the main character who moves to a small coastal town where she meets Jonah. He is recovering from the loss of his father who died six months ago. His mum has got depression. She's not dealing with the, the loss. And so he has to look after all his siblings. She's also dealing with something. We don't know what at the beginning, but then we find out that it's bipolar. Like half the book is going okay. Things are okay. It's the story. It was really enjoyable to read. And then like she stops taking her medication and her behavior starts to, she starts to change. Uh, something tragic happens. And so it's kind of their story, but with mental health uh, problems talked about. And I think this book did that very well. And it, it was an enjoyable book. I just, I think I would have enjoyed it more as a teenager because some of it did seem immature at times, but it, it really was enjoyable. I did enjoy this book. And I I just did not enjoy the ending because it, it's not the ending I was expecting. So I gave this book four stars just because I felt like I would have enjoyed it more as a teenager. And I think back then I definitely would have given it a five star rating. But yeah, I I was happy with this book. And yeah, it was it, it was a good YA. And then another audio book was Meet Me in the Margins. I was very excited for this one and it was so good. I I haven't listened to a lot of audio books. I'm just getting into that. And I haven't listened to any romance novels because I thought I feel like I can't enjoy a romance novel if I'm listening to it because I can get distracted and I just, if it's a good book, I just really want to like imagine the world with me, like around me. I really enjoy this book and I finished listening to it today. So this book is about a main character who is working at a publishing house and she wants, she's written her own book. She found a publisher, but when she shows her the book, she tells her that it's not what she's looking for, that she has some adjustments to make. So she has 44 days to make these adjustments. They have this like room where she works, where they just like leave random books there. It's like a, like a rest kind of room, like a cozy hideaway kind of, I don't know what to call it. And she ends up leaving her manuscript there, I think by accident. And then she comes back to find that someone has annotated it. Someone has made suggestions in the margins 
and so she decides to seek the help of this mystery editor and then she like gets attached to this person she doesn't know who it is but then there's also will the new person at her job who is the son of her manager and he he's new there um and she starts to like speak to him more often and they end up like working together and he's the mystery editor but she doesn't know that and she develops feelings for him and I, this book was just so good so it's uh, like they get together on the very end pages of this book sorry to spoil that for you but i just thought you should know but it is so worth reading just because the journey is worth it um like this book was just i don't know maybe it left me feeling positive it left me feeling happy and i just like it's so good and it feels like so comforting as again to as well to read this book i don't know why i just really enjoy this book i also gave it five stars and i highly recommend it to everyone and then the very last book which i didn't think i'd read is shatter me and i haven't actually finished this yet because i'm filming a vlog i've got 25 percent left um however i guess i can tell you what i th thinking of it so far like the 75 percent so far if you don't know what the book shatter me is it's a series it's a dystopian world series about a girl juliet who she can't touch anyone because if she does they can die so she's been like locked up because the world is gone has gone crazy the world is ending there's like people are in control it's it's horrible reading that part is scary and horrible and i i don't like that also the people in control are like bad and then there's adam who gets sent to like spy on her he's a soldier he works for warner i don't know how to actually summarize this book because a lot happens and i feel like i what is a spoiler and what is not a spoiler this is also like a romance novel but i'm still i can't say much because i might spoil it it's like a ya romance dystopian novel and the like the setting is strange and it but i guess it's like intriguing it makes me want to read more and i'm reading it and i am really enjoying this book i haven't read that many dystopian novels like the selection was one of them but like that one was like all positive and nice this one's more negative but i'm enjoying this book i am enjoying the characters however th this might be a unpopular opinion and it might change but i'm 75 percent of the way through and i'm team adam for now just because i i can't see how someone can like warner because he's evil i he's not nice maybe he changes okay if he changes okay i will keep reading but okay that's all <laughs> you can watch the vlog if you want to hear more about this book because i haven't finished reading it yet so far i it's a four star read i i think it will be a five star read depending on what happens in the next 25 percent. but yeah that's all the books i managed to read i'm shocked with myself that i've done that i've read some good books uh not that many romance novels i have found some new five star reads so i'm happy with that okay and now for the books i want to read in april part so looking at the books i've managed to read these past three months it does the average the average is around seven like i'm happy with however i'm a uni student and i'm getting to the part where i'm writing my dissertation and when i say writing i haven't been writing i do worry that any free time i have in the next couple of months is going to be chaotic um so i feel like my reading might is not a priority for me right now however i it's not like i read at times when i should be studying so i feel like it might not like i can still continue with my reading goals like i said i read on the train i'm not gonna work on my dissertation on the train sundays i really do enjoy my sundays in this chair reading that might change but that's okay so i feel like i'm going to set a realistic goal of five or six books that means it's that comes to like one book a week i feel like i can easily read two week two books a week just because of my chaotic timetable and the trains and all of that so i feel like it's achievable but i i'm not gonna pressure myself if i can't read books it's fine i need to finish my degree first so i have created a small list of five books i also want to film a couple fun reading vlogs so 
again but i'm not going to plan that because that may not be possible so i'm not going to talk about them i want to but i i don't know if i'll get around to it and if i do then cool i just end up reading more books the first book is from my 2023 tbr and it's bringing down the duke because i have wanted to read this book for so long i think it's time i need a new favorite romance novel and i feel like this could be it this book it just sounds so good uh, england 1879 annabelle she's the daughter of a country vicar and she has mm, earned herself a place among the first cohort of female students at oxford uh in return for her scholarship she must support the rising women's suffragette movement her charge recruit men of, of influence to champion their cause her target, Sebastian, the cold and calculating Duke of Montgomery, who steers Britain's politics at the Queen's command. Uh, her challenge, uh, not to give in to the powerful attraction she can't deny for the man who opposes everything she stands for. She sounds so interesting, like, set in Oxford University, royal kind of themes. Um, it just sounds so good. And I feel like it's, it sounds suiting to me right now because I'm in my last months of university, I really should soak up all the books set in prestigious universities so I can pretend that I can identify <laughs> with those characters. Yeah, and it's historical fiction, it's a historical romance, which again, I want to give that genre more of a go. So I'm very excited for this book. And I, th I think it will be a five star read. And I've also looking at books that readers have enjoyed. There's so many with that kind of romance theme of historical romance and I'm excited to read them. It's a hint to what kind of reading vlog I would like to film but I don't know if I'll be able to. Okay the next one is They Wish They Were Us, a good YA mystery novel. I, I'm I'm in the mood for that recently. This book is by Jessica Goodman. I have read uh, her other books and I really did enjoy them so I'm excited to read this one. Uh, a murder mystery set against the backdrop the backdrop of an exclusive prep school on Long Island. I just love books like that. So I want to read really fun books this month. If I am struggling with my dissertation, I want to at least enjoy the books I'm reading. Freshman year, Jill's best friend uh, was killed by her boyfriend. After that dark night on the beach, Graham confessed the cause was the case was closed and everyone moved on. Now it's Jill's senior year and she's determined to make it her best. After all, she's senior and a player. Uh, a member of Gold Coast's perhaps ex exclusive, not so secret, secret society. But when Jill starts getting texts proclaiming Graham's innocence, her dreams of her perfect senior year start to crumble. If Graham didn't kill the girl, who did? And she wants to find out. So this book really reminds me of The Good Girl's Guide to Murder and The Ivies. I'm excited for this. I think it's going to be I hope it's going to be a five star read. If we're talking about that sort of theme, I also want to read this book. Finally, I am going to enjoy this book while sitting in this chair. I am ready. This book has been on my shelf for a couple of years. It is time. Like, I am so excited. You, you probably know what this book is about or you may not know. The case is closed. Five years ago, schoolgirl Andy was murdered by Sal. The police know he did it. Everyone in town knows he did it. But having grown up in the same small town that was consumed by the murder, Pippa isn't so sure. When she chooses the case as a topic for her final year project, she starts to uncover secrets that someone in town desperately wants to stay hidden. And if the real killer is still out there, how far will they go to keep Pip from the truth? This is a series. I've got the second book as well, but I want to start this one. So those two books sound very similar and I'm so excited. The next one, I'm really starting a theme here because the next one is another YA murder mystery. So this book came out last month and I'm so excited. It's called Missing Clarissa. Perfect for fans of the girls, a good girl's guide to murder. The other theme. Two best friends start a true crime podcast only to realise they may have helped a killer in the process. Sounds so interesting. I don't know. What is it about these books that I like? I don't know. Maybe it's because like I am never going to experience that so I like to read about those about those situations that's kind of the quickest summary of that book but it came out recently I'm so excited to read it that's four books that I've to told you about but I think I'm going to pick out two more 
from my Kindle TBR. These are all the books I have on my Kindle. Okay, I'm going to pick two books from here that I hope are going to be romance novels because this is like my fifth take of filming this because I'll, all I seem to keep getting are mystery novels. So I've picked out two, two at once. The book I should read in April is Opposite of Always. Okay, finally, not a mystery novel. This took me like 10, 10 tries. Opposite of Always, that is going on my TBR. Uh, when Jack and Kate meet at a party, bonding until sunrise over the mutual love of Fruit Loops. Jack knows he's falling hard. Soon she's meeting his best friend, Jillian and Franny, and Kate wins them over as easily as she did Jack. But then Kate dies and their story should end there. Yet Kate's death sends Jack back to the beginning, the moment they first met, and Kate's there again, healthy, happy and charming as ever. Jack isn't sure if he's losing his mind. Still, if he has a chance to prevent Kate's death, he'll take it, even if that means believing in time travel. However, Jack will learn that his actions are not without consequences, and when one choice turns deadly for someone else close to him, he has to figure out what he's willing to do to save the people he loves. I was looking for a cute romance novel. Is this gonna make me cry? The book I'm reading, opposite of always. I want to try again, try to find another book from here that I could read. So let's try again. The next book I should read is Just Breathe. I think this is a YA mental health kind of book by Cami McGovern, cause that's on my TBR. This is a YA romance novel with mental health topics. Um, So this book, Just Breathe by Cami McGovern, is about David who has cystic fibrosis and Jamie who's struggling with depression. And it's a story of their friendship and it's a YA romance novel with, but also talks about mental health. This is a genre I also want to read more of because it brings me back to high school when this was like all I read and I want to find some new favorites in that genre as well. So I'm excited to read this and i i really do like the idea of creating tbrs like this these are the two that i'm going to take out from here i probably have like 80 left in here and i think it's just fun to do when like you don't know what to read so you just pick something at random when you're also in a reading slump because i feel like i read so many good books creating this tbr was really difficult because i feel like i'm running out of time to read all these good books just because uh, after uni, I don't know what I'm doing. I worry I won't have the time to read as much and reading will not be something I spend that much time doing. And there are so many good books I still want to read. Like I was debating whether I should, on this TBR, whether I should put books that I know that are like the TikTok hyped books, um, because I know they're going to be potentially good. Or if I should read more underrated novels, which or like read books that I really want to read just so I can find a new uh, underrated favourite novel. Yeah, it's, I don't know, creating this TBR was a bit stressful for me, but that's the TBR. That, those are the books I want to read. Uh, the themes are historical romance, why mystery novels and romance. So thank you for watching, for sticking through, through the super long video. Subscribe to see more from me. Let me know what content you would like to see, any reading vlogs anything please let me know because yes thank you for watching and i will see you in my next video